getting used to these uh, little explanations before a film. This particular film was uh, videoed last year and when I downloaded it, it was over three hours. And that wasn't even everything that I had worked on, that was just what I videoed. So, having edited it, I realized I had to split it. So the first part is on the chair, which covers the um, exposed front and back legs, which is always useful. Also, just basically putting it all to back together and a discussion about what was in there. Please enjoy part one, and as soon as I've got the second half done, which is on the back, I'll be posting that too. Take care. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Sally Wood for Be Inspired, and today I'm going to be showing you how to recover a rocking chair or any other chair that has arms that are exposed either at the back or at the front. And um, the reason why I have left this cupboard like this is because I want to show you how they arrive to me sometimes. And uh, I think this chair has been in storage for um, many years, so it's very dusty, hence me wearing old, old gear today. So let's get on with it. Remove the um, chair seat cover and as I said this this fabric is really quite rotten it's very dusty so just very carefully so you don't put too much dust into the atmosphere ease it up you can even see the dust coming rising and then very carefully Go back around and remove any tacks that have been left in there. You don't want to leave anything in there if you, if you can help it. Work your way around each section. In this case, they've got some pieces are um, tacked underneath, like that. And then the rest is tacked on top. So carefully move everything out of the way. They've also put um, tacks on the front edge here. See if you can ease those up as well without damaging the wood. And then go back for the tacks if necessary later. And then I'm going to leave this padding in place and see, see if I can work around that as I move everything out of the way. Now I've hoovered all the dust off and as the cover has pulled off everything else was pulled down as well and we can see this needs to be replaced too. Now this is a little bit interesting. They've used coir fibre which is actually the outside of a coconut shell. They kind of ret it. They, they put it in uh, water and soak it and it eventually just comes off as this fibre. And then they've got the uh, cotton wadding over the top and uh, Sometimes you'll find horsehair instead. And this isn't old enough for horsehair, so I'm just going to roll that up in one piece and get put that to one side. Now, working around the top of the fabric here, because this has to come out, this is just so rotted and worn out. Do the same as you did for the base and remove any tacks. Now, be careful along the front. You only want to be taking out the tacks that are holding this down. So just work your way around because there's also nails holding this down. And I've seen people accidentally pull these ones out and not realize that that's what they're doing. So if you've got this problem, just work on round to remove the, the cloth. I don't actually have burlap left, but I've got this fabric, which I'm going to just double over is a hard wearing mixture of fibers so I'm just going to pull that over and secure it down before I put the next layer on. And I'm not going to worry about centering it or anything just a little bit of uh, tension. What I'm going to do is pull across ways so that you can see it's pulling down and do the same again. Oops a daisy. If I can. There we go. So when you, you do side to side first and then as I say you just put a little bit of tension on as you pull it out. 
Now I'm going to do the same again, front to back. So I'll put, see if I can get the back in first. I'm going to start in the centre and pull out from there. Got the, the back on, I'm just going to do the same at the front. This doesn't have to be centered, it just has to, with a bit, just a little bit of tension, not too much. And then you just fold the fabric back up so it's out of the way. And secure that in place too. When you've gone round, you can cut back a little bit. You don't have to cut back very far, just a little piece. Just so it looks, uh, so it doesn't um, get too far up here. I usually cut back to about an inch to two inches. Okay, so once you've taken the bulk out of the sides, just take it out of the uh, corners here, and uh, then everything should lay flat. You just want it as flat as possible. The, the new layer will go on top and hold everything in place, so don't don't worry too much. I just tried the um, original seat cover on it, but it was really lumpy, so I've decided to put foam in here instead, which is a bit of a pain, because I've got to push it all the way down at back. Make sure that it comes to the edge of the chair at least, and then uh, kind of wriggle it so it's centered. I can make sure that the side comes here and there. And with a sharpie, I'm just going to put a line under like that. And the same for the front here. Just run it along on this side. Just put a line as far as I can on there. I know that I wouldn't have got it in straight. So what I'm going to do is measure from this edge to the front here, which is about three inches. And then I'm going to do the same here. So I'll be able to straighten this line out. And I'm going to just go all the way along there. That's going to be my first cut. Where that line is, I'm going to just take that out a little bit and cut across. So as I say, I'm going to be a little bit more generous than what I had originally, but it gives me an idea. And then using the... Um, electric knife. I'm just going to cut all the way along. And then the same on this side. Okay, so now I'm going to just pop it back on for now because I'm going to be wriggling it and cutting into it so that I can get around these corners and it fits nice and tight. There and there, and then I'll cut it in to a square, and it should fit in nicely. So that's two. This is a little bit bigger, but that I can put some stuffing in there if need be, and then I'll work around the back exactly the same way. I'm going to remark my side because it might have altered now that I've got that side in. Having done that, I'm going to put my finger on it and actually, yeah, it's the inside line, not the outside one. Nice easy fix. Once the foam is cut and put into place, I'm going to put this Dacron down or wadding people call it different things oh, and I'm just going to push that underneath to go at the back like that it's a little bit tight comes around to the side make sure that it comes all the way to the bottom of the chair frame so I'm going to just pull this part through here so I'm just going to pull this part down here so it comes there and if it's not exactly at the bottom, it's not too much of a problem. And then just work your way 
so there's plenty of uh, fabric across the front too to cover where we want it to go there's an art to getting these all into the corners lay it at a 45 degree to the corner and then just cut in towards where you want it to fold not too close because it's going to just pop down and fill in the area like that and we can fold it up use any extras uh, to fill any gaps and then work your way around all four corners exactly the same 45 degree to your corner now this lady has chosen this fabric I actually haven't had a look at it yet so I'm not sure how the pattern goes we'll have to have a look you could actually have it either either way if you wanted if you wanted it that way nice and plain or coloured so I assume she wants the coloured side she actually didn't tell me and then we have to look at the pattern and this could go a number of ways actually always remember when you look at things that um, leaves go up and heavy flowers come down, light flowers go up. But that's a general rule. Stems usually come from the bottom, so all of the stems are coming up this way. Sometimes the way the fabric's woven is that the flowers come this way up, but I think we're okay with this one. So I'm gonna pop that there and see how centered I can get that. Might not be quite where I want it, but I'm sure it will work out. I'm on the floor and the chair's up high, so it's a little bit awkward for me to see at the moment, but I think that will come round to there, yeah, that will go up, that looks pretty centred at the moment. Having determined that this is our centre pattern, I now have to work out where the centre of that pattern is, and I'm going to, I've decided that from this point to this point is probably the widest. When, when you're choosing patterns you have to decide things so I want this more or less to be in the center of the whole chair but not not totally so I'm going to put the pin here and I'm going to put the other pin here when you when you're centering you just got to kind of choose areas that look about right and then for the top and bottom I'm going to choose that part of the pattern. I know the pattern goes on up. I'm kind of deciding that this is the, the most uh, prominent part and I'm gonna put my other pin here. Now, what that entails is this. When I fold this pin over, I'm going to try to line it up as closely as I can to that pin there. And as I said, that's where I wanted my center pin to be. Using this method, I know that from around about there to here was the end, took me to the end of the chair. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this border edge with this pattern so that it's nice and even. And I'm going to cut that down. So that, that will give me the width of the chair. I'm going to be a little bit generous. I'm going to go about an inch and a half outside there. So having used these ones to get there, I've matched the pattern top and bottom. And that's in line. And I've cut my top and bottom middle marks out. And I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to just fold the pins up together because they're nice and easy to find if I do it that way. Roll the fabric up and down. So here, in order to make sure that I have the pattern right that way, I will do the same again. If I roll that part of the pattern to there, it's even. And again, I'm going to take my halfway mark out there and again on that side. Now, this just means that the pattern is center to where I want it on where I think it should go. So I'm going to remove those pins too. Now I need to make sure that the pattern is going to be centered at the front, back and both sides. So I'm going to do the side and it's a little bit awkward. So I'm going to do the inside rail, which is 16 inches. So I'm going to the back is 18. 
the front is 23 which is 11 and a half and there's the mark there okay so that's perfect that's exactly where I want it make sure that I can actually see this mark when I'm pulling the fabric down I'm actually going to extend it across the front of the chair slightly on all four sides as well it doesn't have to be very far just a little bit now I'm going to place this fabric back on top the way I think it's meant to go, or the way I've decided it is meant to go. I'm going to fold all of that onto there like that, and I'm going to put a staple on the front edge. I'm not going to pull it too tight because this is this comes in later. I have my centre mark here. You can't really see it, but the centre mark is here. So I'm going to just pull that over just one little staple and so all this can come in later and then I'm going to do the same at the back so all of this is pushed through like this here again I have my center mark on the fabric and there's my center mark there so I'm just going to pull that down this is so nothing can be pulled out very easily. And then again at the sides, there's my corner piece or my side piece and there's my mark. So I'm literally just gonna pull it along there and secure it this side. And again, the last one, there's that one and it will be lined up with this. I've got to actually pull that one a little ways back, but not too bad, there we go. I've got one silly dog outside. Anyway, there we are, all four in place. Now I can see that I can pull the fabric back a little bit, but I don't want to pull it much further forward. Right, before I decide this is exactly where I want to put the chair cover, I'm just going to pop this into place because the, exist the new back isn't going to be much bigger than that. I think from what I can see, that looks pretty centered from here to here. So I'm actually very pleased with that. I'm just gonna remove the tack here because I don't need it. So I'm moving that one. And I'm just gonna pop this up and you see this kind of flops over a little bit. I'm gonna fill that space up with a couple of layers of extra wadding just to soften it. And I'm not gonna go all the way to the end because I'm gonna be tucking stuff under. So I'm going to start here and then just a couple of inches from there. And I'm just going to trim it level or just under level to the bar here with the chair frame. Okay, so that's where my new order is going to be. So I'll bring this down tight. I'll just fold it over and fill that out a little bit. Now here, so I'm holding here and I'm pulling down and where that comes to here I'm actually going to follow the threads and put a couple of pins just along those threads so that I can find them easily in a minute as long as it's within a thread or two will be fine because I want it to go in as flat as possible along the front and then it won't twist the fabric or the pattern. Right, there's my mark, there's my the apex to my uh, uh, centre mark. Oops, a daisy, that's not good. And now I'm going to just pop that pin along the base of that board, like that, and staple it. Now I can remove that pin. What I'm going to do is move along, off and out to the base of this pin and staple that one into place as well. And now go the other way and now I'm, I'm not pulling straight down, I'm pulling across ways. So I'm always pulling down and out. So there's my next pin and pop that there and pin that into place too. Yeah, there we are, all three pinned into place. 
for this. I'm just going to pull it across like I did with this at a right angle to the inside of this post. I'm going to cut from this corner all the way in. So I've cut it to within half an inch of that post. So by the time that comes down, it should all be hidden behind there. I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. This fold is at right angles to the inside of this post. And I'm gonna come from the corner straight in. Having cut this on this side, I'm just gonna pull this also down and across. And I'm going to secure that. I like to come to about two inches, two to three inches from where the um, exposed leg will be. So let's do that as well. About here. I'll say I apologize, the uh, chair keeps wriggling. And I'm going to just infill like that, just pull it with my fingers so it's like that. And that should smooth the, the front border out. There we go. I'm going to do the same on this side. Just pop that down and pull the cover again out and to the side. And it should be to about two inches from the exposed leg. Now, here comes the fun part. I'm going to pull that back and I'm going to take this to the outside of this leg here. I'm just going to trim that back, pull it to here and just straight up. That allows me enough fabric or wadding to pop underneath and make it nice and tight like that. Also pull that out to level with the outside of the leg. I like to do it separately, just so that I've got clean, clean uh, edges. As I fold it under, make sure all of that is still there. But I'll fold this under onto he under onto the top wadding, and I'll pinch and fold, pinch and fold until it's nice and tight, and. Um, just make sure that this fold actually follows the inside of that, that piece of wood. Now I might need to come back later and take that out, but with a bit of luck it's exactly where I need it. And say so I've just pinned it all, stapled it all the way in as tight as I can. And now I'm going to do the other side. I actually need to take this one a little bit closer to the corner. Bit of luck that will pull, pull down like I want it and fold it back. I'm going to leave this one for now. On the back two corners you do exactly the same as you did on the front. You trim the back to about a um, half an inch to an inch from the inside edge of the chair frame. Trim back both sides on the outside of the chair frame so you've got enough fabric to turn back. Got the lining underneath. There's my halfway mark and I'm just going to pull that down and line it up with the mark on I'm just going to pull it a little bit. I'm not going to pull too much. And I'm going to pull right underneath and secure it. And again, move to the front or to the back, whichever you prefer doing first. I tend to go forward first and then back on one side and then back on the other side and forward. I've, I'm holding on to both this and the top fabric so it pulls in together. So I'm going to try this way. Pull it down, forward, and to the side. Now that looks a lot easier. That looks 
that looks better now I'm coming to this corner um, fold all of that underneath and pull down I'm thinking that will work on both sides so here here goes keep it tight try to when you do this try to keep the warp or the weft threads actually in line with each other so they go up and down pull on one and then say I'm pulling forward I might have to there's a little wrinkle here so I'm just going to put one here wriggle that round and bring that right underneath like that and now the although there is a little bit of a, a pleat it's quite um, a shallow pleat and it's right underneath so here goes the next one Perfect. Now I'm going to work this way back and again down and back. Sometimes I wish I was left handed, it would be making my life a lot easier sometimes. Okay, here we go. And again, I'm going to work into this corner, I'm going to fold, see where that comes. I think it'll work there, so I'm going to fold that down and around. I might have to wriggle this one a little bit. And there's a little bit of a um, pleat in there that I'll let go in a minute. I'm thinking I can go in closer than that half inch just a little bit not too much but just try you know when you're when you're doing this don't just overthink it go little by little and I might no that, that's fine put that under there it comes in there's quite a bit of chunk here, so I'm going to take some of it out from underneath first, just at the top, where the leg is, and just a little bit of there, not very much. Where the exterior leg is, it's it's not as shaped, so it's not quite so forgiving. So I say, you know, you just need to work it in. There we go. It's nice and tight. Pull. It's going to release slightly. And then I'm just going to make sure all of the threads are in there behind and pull that in as well. And if you need to, you might not be able to see. You might not be able to see, but as I'm pulling it down, I'm twisting the fabric underneath so it's not quite spooky. I'm pulling it again right to the center of the back and then I can start on the back I'm, I'm quite happy with that side that's gone quite well okay I'm having a little trouble on this side pulling it back so what I'm actually going to do is uh, make a little neck a crossways at the top here it's only midway across but it sometimes just gives enough leeway for the fabric to um, open up as you're pulling it down sometimes you need to do it sometimes you don't and that has gone in a lot closer than it was so I'm going to pull that down and secure that too. Now this corner I put in earlier and it doesn't really want to go in properly. I've, I can pull it forward so I'm just going to pull a couple of these out from underneath and I, I had said to you that I might need to. I just hoped I didn't have to. There we go. Should, should only be two. So having reworked this one in, it pulls forward and this one also 
and it does it's taken out the wrinkles that were on the corner here so let's see if I can get those two pieces I like to go around chairs a couple of times to make sure that they're tight enough so all I'm going to do is remove this this center one and I know that's centered and I'm going to just pull my hand up and pull that in it's, it's probably only gone about half an inch if that so I'm going to pop that there and staple it back into place and then I'm going to work this way towards me taking out taking them out and putting them back in and that's probably almost in line so I'm not going to worry too much and then I'll just infill there and I'm going to walk, work towards this corner if I have to rework the corners then I will but I should be okay because I did take them in real tight earlier and so I'm pulling up and towards me up and towards me and then I work the other way and I do this on all four sides so that the seat cover is really nice and tight so in and towards me as I come to this corner it's actually slightly over not enough that I need to um, cut it back but sometimes you you might need to recut it just trim it back a little bit if it's if it won't roll like this into place sometimes it would be handy to have an extra extra hand because my my poor hands aren't as good as they used to be so they get tired there and I'll just do the same on the other side I'm, I'm happy with that once you've reworked all your sides yeah, just trim back the excess fabric if, if you want to that's up to you some people like to staple it further underneath personally I don't I, I try to keep everything neat, neat and tidy and the bottom cloth is just a black fabric I've actually got some sometimes I use um, any of any fabric I, I put anything on the bottom that I feel like putting on but I've actually got right stuff today. I prefer to put a fold on these things if I can and I'm just going to put a staple there. And if you put a put a fold in it it just looks neater it's got double the thickness if it's going to pull out it shouldn't pull out that quickly. And I've set it about a quarter of an inch from the front so it shouldn't show at all and then I'm just going to work my way across here it doesn't have to be perfectly cut as I say when you fold it over it it really doesn't make much difference there we are nice nice rough cut so I'm going to pull it towards the back slightly I've got plenty so I'm just going to roll that over too and uh, attach this at the same time. Just put a little bit of tension on it, not too much. And then it, and it'll go in nice and tight. So just a wee bit of tension. Sides do exactly the same, just pull it slightly. Just allow for the shape of the chair, because when you get to the corner, just like you do on everything else, cut into the side, cut in at a 45 degree angle. But you can go a little bit closer to the corner, that doesn't matter. And then I usually fold it one way and then the other, so it's it's tight bar there. Okay, so that's there. Do the same on this corner, fold it under. And then back and then pop that one in as well. As I say, just, just work your way around the chairs. 
Thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video on how to reupholster an exposed arm chair. In this case, it was a rocking chair. I hope I've given you enough tips that you can uh, actually try your own. Please remember to subscribe, hit the bell button if you want to hear more from me, and a few th thumbs up would be really good. Take care, see you later. Ciao. Hey bad cat. Hey bad cat, you need to get up. Yeah, work's gotta be done, bad boy. Yeah, looky, looky at you. Now Trixie wants a bit of this. Mm-hmm. Gonna get up? Excellent. Yeah, I feel like that too. <laughs>